Hey guys, this is Gimmickel, welcome back to Toho the Genius of Sephiroth. Last time we basically reached the top of the Okai Mountain. It only took like five videos, but we made it up to the top, so that's pretty good, right? So we didn't encounter one of the enemies, and we also have some other stuff to take care of in terms of leveling and whatnot. So my party is a lot different to last time, other than Sakia, because really it's because of Slayers. Uh, Sakia makes three or four of the enemies in this place absolutely trivial. So I figured she's still important, we'll keep her in, but otherwise... Yeah, this is a pretty different party as you can see. So we do have some lower level characters here. Let's just put it that way, I mean Aya Commander is level 25, by far my lowest character, as she usually is. Used to be her and Satori that competed for the absolute lowest, with uh, Nitori being like third. But we're getting a lot more use out of Satori and Nitori this time, so that's pretty good. But Aya... Yeah, I do kind of want to keep her leveled up as well, because she does have some useful traits for a few encounters, so we'll go ahead and keep her up. And really this is just going to be a lot more sort of defensive, because, well, Alice needs some levels too, and uh, I don't necessarily trust my defenses as much as I did before, so... This is what we're going with, and essentially we're just going to wipe out as many enemies as I see fit for stuff. Either I get all the items I want, or more likely I get like the levels and stuff that I'm after, and probably don't get the items because they're jer jerks like that, but hey, we'll see. So, until then, I shall see you guys when an interesting thing happens. Whoa, straight away we have an interesting thing. I think this guy drops a crow feather. Yeah, so unfortunately not the greatest of items to get, but yeah, that's a that's a rare drop that we can see here. You can tell I've never crafted anything for Aya, but uh, yeah, that might change in the future, because I think whatever armor comes out next... Ooh, as we see the thing which I need to kill too. Uh, whichever armor Aya gets next I think has bombs on it, so I would want that for the principle of it having bombs. So, Earthquake Catfish. It counters something with Earthquake. I forget what it is, uh, whether it's physical or magic. But I believe we should see that it is weak to electric, so we'll go ahead and element for that. I don't think it can be poison, being a thing of Earth, but I shall try anyway, because why not? This is a setup turn. And we'll just see how much damage it does here. So yeah, I think it's magic that it counters. Oh, you can poison it. Yeah, it counters magic with Earthquake and can actually daze with said uh, counter as well. Or maybe not. I don't know. I know it can counter something because I know it sometimes gets more actions per turn. So that is a thing to watch out for. Uh, maybe it counters physical and we just didn't see it. Let's... Just go ahead and find out. Uh, can we just try and insta-kill it because that'd be funny if it works. Konpaku Flash, go! In case you haven't noticed, I'm actually using the uh, tier 4. Oh wow, you can double cast that? Why have I never seen this before? Or why do I not remember ever seeing this? Ah, Thorn Bind, kind of annoying. Yeah, okay, so it can counter attacks with Thorn Bind. Looks like it can counter both types of attack, which is annoying. But, yeah, I don't remember ever seeing that double cast before. Maybe I just am misremembering stuff, but, yeah, that's that's kind of hilarious, actually. <laughs> oh, Tail Chop is annoying, too, but whatever. That's why we build ourselves defensively here. Alice is perfectly fine. Oh, perfect. Alice is perfectly fine to use during stages as well, just because she's a boss, like, 
assistant character doesn't mean that you can't do this during stages and have it work out just as well. So we have the muscle belt too, which is exactly what I wanted off of that. So let's just put that on Satori because she currently has muscle belt 1. So this is plus 60 HP. And then you can also use muscle belt 1 on either the same character or somebody else if you have the slot for it and get the 30 HP. So this significantly augments the survivability of the cats. Look at that, we almost have as much HP as Notori now. Uh, yeah, it significantly increases your survival rate and that is really good. So basically we got exactly what I wanted there. So cannot complain at that. And a couple of levels as well, Satori, who, as I've said before, doesn't get any new skills anymore, but the levels are still important, and Yomu gains a level as well. Uh, one quick thing, I didn't actually mention the extra items I made. So with the Yokai Mountain Rocks, I made Alice's uh, Tier 4 weapon, uh, so that she now has all uh, magic attacks resisted and complete with the Lunar Mail and her natural pierce resistance, she actually has a 25% resist to every element in the game, which is pretty cool. In fact, except like fully non-elemental stuff, obviously, but every, uh, every basic attack she has a resistance to, which is neat. And then the other thing, we made Yomu's Tier 4 sword, like I've said before, higher uh, accuracy on this one, so it's... Uh, quite good with the Azura stance here. Lots of critical hit rate too, so Azura does make nice use of this. And we also made her armor as well, mostly for the bomb plus, but the counter stuff might actually be good too. Uh, countering physical attacks and having more counter rate for other attacks I guess as well is nice. Of course, uh, as usual, the moment I stop talking during fights, we get an item. Gold is very good to get, though, and I'm actually surprised we're getting so much of it. Uh, whilst I'm here, I'm actually going to quickly go ahead and change something, because I want Mark uh, Kick here. So I need to quickly change this, because... Uh, Alice's weapons, all of them, can do days. So, Mark Kick is still a good thing to have around. I probably won't ever use it here. But it's still good to have around just in case. You never know. You know, that, that one time out of like 100, you might end up using it. And it'll be good in that one time. And so, Natori gains another level. 200 HP, pretty good. It's not the highest, obviously. Ooh, hello. Oh, this one's staying in, too. Uh, if they both stay in, this could be trouble. Oh, god, they're both staying in. 
goodbye, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> A surprise attack with Yukari where they both stay in. That's kind of ridiculous. Okay, so... Paparazzi is really good against the Yukari, obviously, because you can move ahead of them, and that's nice. I don't have any physical skills here with you, so you're just going to have to do what you do. And uh, Killing Doll is probably a little bit better than Full Moon Revenge because of the accuracy debuff on that. So we'll try and work with this here. Four damage on that slash, nice. I think this will get a kill, yep. That's one killed, good. And both of them killed, beautiful. So for that, we get a crap load of experience. <laughs> so. I should also note I did make the Lucky Shoes, I believe they are, the 3% the party experience item for, uh, because I went back and got a Celestial Peach, it's auto, auto battles at this point, nothing too difficult, so Aya currently has plus 1% party, plus 3% party, and then plus 5% for her own experience, so that is why we got almost 300 more experience there, or like 240 more, very good. So. Alice gets a skill, Artful Sacrifice, that uh, we might actually look and look to use that at one point, I need to see. Uh, Notori doesn't get any skills, but another 6 HP is good. Satori gets some good stuff, Yomu of course gets a level 2, and Sakia gets a relatively useless attack, but still an attack nonetheless, and Aya, <laughs> Aya with all of her lower level stuff gets 3 freaking levels out of that, it's ridiculous. Unfortunately, still get, didn't get the drop that, I was, that I'm after off of them, but whatever, there's loads of time to get that later. So, the thing that we got was Artful Sacrifice, because Enchanted was the one we already had that raises resistance stuff. Artful Sacrifice absorbs an element for your entire party. It's actually not a bad skill, it just takes a bomb, which is annoying, but not unusable. If your enemy uses one particular element, then you can use this and it will actually heal you, I believe, as well. Not for very much, if I remember rightly. I've only used this skill about three or four times, but it does actually heal you as well. I think. I am I might just be misremembering that, and if I am, I apologize, but it either just completely nullifies the attack or it actually lets you heal off it as well. Pretty cool skill. I suppose we might actually try and show that at some point, but yeah, not really for a fight like this, I don't think. And because of the masses of experience we got last time, we get more levels very quickly. So Alice already up a level 33, and we get another bomb skill for the Manusa stance on Yomu. So she's gonna start getting new stuff. I actually forgot to show Sakuya's new skill. So Phantom Killer in the Night Mist, it's a very, very expensive attack here. It's only a little bit stronger than Illusional Misdirection, but it's so much more expensive and so so much more in terms of the cooldown as well, 5 turns compared to 3, that I just don't see too much use in this attack. It doesn't hit any more times, it could still only hit once, which would be a huge waste of 25 MP and a bomb. And I don't know, maybe the instant death rate is higher for it? That's the only reason I could see to ever actually use that attack? But... Or maybe if because uh, all three attacks might get a chance to do instant death. Maybe if you're really lucky you could hit three different enemies and insta-kill all of them. I don't know, it doesn't seem worth it to me. Anyway, uh, the Slash of Eternity. It's Basically, this is one of the reasons why Manusa is the best stance in terms of uh, single target like killing stuff. Apart from just the fact of it's designed for that, obviously. 
This attack is super, super good, and is even potentially justifiable in terms of using Manusa in groups as well, but I wouldn't normally do it. But you hit three to five times. The strength is low, but don't let that put you off, because remember, Manusa is really good at critical hits, and uh, Yomu has a lot of critical hit damage ups. So that low output becomes very high very quickly and it becomes a lot strong a lot lot stronger than this so as you would expect from something that has a uh, larger cooldown than MP cost but yeah it's a hugely powerful skill and you should definitely have it equipped if you are using Manusa right up until ever basic basically it's just about always going to be useful so yeah, that's one reason why I got more bombs on Yomu, is because she has that attack, which is super good. And there's another level for Satori. Uh, 207 HP is a lot, but do remember she has the Muscle Band on at the moment, so she doesn't really have that much HP, but she has a pretty good amount. Alright, after a fairly intense battle with veteran power there, we get a field spell for Aya. So, Peerless Wind God is actually really good, and it's, again, this this sort of thing is what Aya is good for. It's really, your, you've got to justify using a character slot for it, that's the only problem. But, it's a field spell that makes you always move first, which is actually really powerful because there's a lot of enemy attacks that have got high priority that cause like days or uh, other very nasty effects that this can just circumnavigate. The difference between that and illusionary dominance is that dominance makes you move ahead in that turn whereas peerless wind god lets you move ahead for several turns afterwards but doesn't affect the current turn. So it's the sort of thing you would set up on turn 1 and then just ignore it for a while from there. So yeah, powerful effect but one that you have to be a little bit cautious about using if you are relying on you know, you've got to plan ahead for it basically, because you can't just use it in the same turn that you want to go first. And there's one more level 4 in the Tori. Level 34, pretty good. As a result, I mean, these guys are catching up or even exceeding stuff now because of that ridiculously good Yukari thing. So I may just clear out this last room and that'll be it. I didn't get any of the shields I was after, but I also don't think that that's necessarily a bad thing because what I did end up getting was the muscle belt that I was truly after, and I think the rest of the stuff I can kind of get at some other time. Like, it's really non-essential items that I'm missing right now. That's the the key thing to take away from this. So, wow, that did not do a whole lot. Divine Barrier plus resistance to the attack type really neuters any sort of offense that you can deal there. It's kind of unfortunate, but that's just the way it goes. Uh, I guess we'll just pull in revenge here then. That's what makes these demon and angel enemies so difficult to deal with, is the fact that they do have that divine barrier that blocks a lot of your attacks. If you want to handle that a little bit better, then Reimu's free bomb commander skill can help out. But Reimu is also really good against the demons, so it's a bit of a trade-off that way. Do you use uh, do you use her in the fights, or do you use her as a commander? 
Oh, perfect. Speaking of shields that I was gonna look at getting, well, with a couple of levels here as well, 33 for her, 36 for Sakia is getting pretty high, although I don't think Sakia is above the par level yet, so there is that. But yes, we get the Devil Shield. So this is very, very good against Dark Attacks and not so good against everything else. It's the Dark Equivalent of the other shields that we've been seeing so far. So these ones here, the 152 defense, the 40 evasion is actually really not too uh, indicative of their effectiveness because against their respective element it's basically a 100% chance. So against uh, electric here basically you will always block electric but you will block fire and all the others much less than 40% of the time. So it's not really an in indicator as such but hey that's that's what it is right so I think this will probably be the last uh, couple of fights here that I do and then we shall be done with this place ultimate division is crap in this fight uh, Jack the Ludabar might actually get a kill on the orangutan here because it does do a lot of damage only if I got two hits though oh crap well at least I learned the skill before I died <laughs> <laughs> oh, double targeting the lowest HP character. Not fun. However, these guys are weak to stab, so Notori can do a lot of damage. But yeah, Breathless Strikes is actually a neat skill that we'll see in a sec. I kind of noticed just now that one of the big weaknesses on this Notori, I should have put Maruto Break on this set, because I, no I don't have a small AoE move. It's actually not too bad here, because the Pierce Attack can hit the Orangutan as well, but... I really should have thought about that a little bit more and had a piercing attack, uh, not a piercing, an AoE move on Natori here. Again, Maruto break would have been fine. And uh, now that the first guy's died, Sunny Strike doesn't go on the target that I wanted, so that's sort of annoying. But whatever. Uh, Alice gets hit so often here that it's fine. Uh, we didn't get the Demon Crest armor, I guess that's the only other thing that I would have liked. Just to have shown it off, I don't even remember exactly what it does. I think it's a mid-tier armor though, which I am a bit short on mid-tier armors, but whatever, you know. So, with that said, this has been Game of Cow playing Toho, the genius of Sapphiros, and next time, well, we're here to speak with Kanako and Sawako, right, about this instant. Like, not necessarily saying that they're culprits, but we need some information about the instant. And yeah, that's that's what's going to happen. We're going to ask them and they're going to totally tell us and we're going to totally get to the end of this and it's going to be the game over, right? See you guys next time.